gentlemen. Brutal, ugly, cruel. Almost unbelievable, but proof. And it points to one unassailable fact. Char beating in this country is a major problem. Now take a look. This is only fiction. All this, just a fraction of the total number of reported cases for one 12-month period. Beatings administered with a fist, violent enough to smash a grown man's ribs, let alone the ribs of a two-year-old. Whippings with a rope studded with steel barbs. Malnutrition and near starvation, all in the name of healthy discipline. Dislocation of both legs because, because an 18-month-old wouldn't eat his breakfast. Third-degree burns from boiling water because a mere toddler stuck at his dinner table. Compound fractures of both legs because a two-month-old cried for a bottle an hour ahead of time. Bruises, contusions, and a fractured skull because a three-and-a-half-year-old came home from a birthday party with a new dress soil. Multiple fractures of the skull because a four-year-old couldn't stop wetting the bed. And a seven-week-old infant gagged with a necktie and asphyxiated because she cried. Simply because she cried. Well, you name it, it's all here. Torturing, sexual assault, deliberate starvation, murder. The age of most of these victims, three years and under. Now, these abuses stop only if they happen to be discovered or if death intervenes. And that gentleman is all too often. All right, now, who's to blame for all this? Who should we nail to the wall? The parents? Well, that's an easy way out. Now, let's get down to basics. What or who allows the cover up? What or who allows these crimes to be repeated and repeated until death is the final result for some helpless kid? Well, I accuse you, gentlemen, all of you. I accuse the juvenile court judges. I accuse the probation department and its offices. I accuse the sheriff's office and the police department's juvenile division and its offices. I accuse the politicians and the social workers. I accuse the whole community and the people who are responsible for making the laws for this community. And while I'm accusing the members of the medical profession, both the man in private practice and the hospital staff physician. Too many of us have been far too lax, failing to recognize these cases and failing to expose them. Now, gentlemen, it's time we get moving on this thing, and I mean now. We've just established liaison with most of the hospitals in this county. We are providing for the immediate mutual exchange of all reports and information on every case of child beating, admitted or suspected. Now, that liaison in court has got to be extended to include the courts and law enforcement agencies if we expect to beat this problem. Until the proper laws are written into the books, and until those laws are adequately enforced, we're going to be responsible for the suffering and the crippling and deaths of dozens of innocent children. Until we do something about it, all of us together, the cop, the judge, the politician, the professor, the private practitioner, the intern, the resident, we are guilty. We are to blame for what happens to those kids, past and future. Now, the hospital morgue is one flight down from the first floor, gentlemen. In that morgue, there's a marble slab. Right now, it's occupied with the body of a little girl. Her name was Patty Randall. She was seven years old. But we're the reason she's there, gentlemen. We are responsible. We are the guilty ones. <laughs>